if we're traveling out there, interstellar travel or um, doing some of the interesting things we've been talking about, how much of those ships would be occupied by AI systems, do you think? What would the what would be the living organisms occupying those ships? Yeah, it it's depressing to think about AI in the search for life because it has, I mean, I've been thinking about this a lot over the last few weeks with playing around with chat GPT-3 like many of us and being astonished with its capabilities. And you see that it that our society is undergoing a change that seems significant in terms of the development of artificial intelligence. It, we've been promised this revolution, this singularity for a long time, but it really seems to be stepping up its uh, its pace of development at this point. And so that's interesting because as someone who looks for alien life out there in the universe, um, it sort of implies that our current stage of development is highly transitional and that you know, you go back for the last four and a half billion years, the, the planet was dumb, essentially. If you go back the uh, last few thousand years, there was a civilization, but it wasn't really producing any techno signatures. And then over the last maybe 100 years, there's been something that might be detectable from afar. But we're pretend, approaching this cusp where we might imagine it. I mean, we, we're thinking of like maybe years and decades with AI development, typically when we talk about this. But as an astronomer, I have to think about much longer time scales of centuries, millennia millions of years and so if this if this wave continues over that time scale which is still the blink of an eye on a cosmic time scale that implies that everything will be ai essentially out there mm -hmm. if this is a common behavior and so that's intriguing because it sort of implies that we are uh special in in terms of our moment in time as a civilization which it normally is um something we're averse to as astronomers. We, we normally like this mediocrity principle. We're not special. We're a typical part of the universe, sometimes known as the cosmological principle. But in a temporal sense, we may be in a unique location. And perhaps that is part of the a solution to the Fermi paradox, in fact, that if it is true that planets tend to go through basically three phases, dumb life for the vast majority, a, a brief period of biological intelligence, and then an extended period of artificial inter intelligence that they transition to, then we would be at a unique and special moment in galactic history that would be of particular interest for any anthropologist out there in the galaxy, right? This would be the time that you would want to study civili a civilization very carefully. You wouldn't want to interfere with it. You would just want to see how it plays out. Kind of similar to the ancestor simulations that I sometimes talked about with the simulation argument, that you are able to observe perhaps your own origins and study how the transformation happens. And so, yeah, that has for me recently been throwing the Fermi paradox a bit on its head. And this idea of the, the zoo hypothesis that we may be monitored, which has for a long time been sort of seen as a fringe idea, even amongst the SETI community. But if we live in this truly transitional period, it adds, it adds a lot of impetus to that idea, I think. Well, even AI itself would, by its very nature, would be observing us by, you know, it, it's like uh, human, there used to be this concept of human computation, which is actually exactly what's feeding the current chat uh, language models, which is leveraging all the busy stuff we're doing to do the hard work of learning. So like uh, mm -hmm. the language models are trained on human interaction and human language on the internet. Mm -hmm. And so it would, AI feeds on the output of brain power from humans. Mm -hmm. And so like it would be observing and observing and it gets stronger as it observes. So it actually gets extremely good at observing humans. And one of the interesting philosophical questions that starts percolating is what makes us, what is the interesting thing that makes us human? we tend to think of it, uh, and you said like there's three phases. What's the thing that's hard to come by in phase three? Mm -hmm. Is it something like scarcity, which is limited resources? Is it something like consciousness? Is that the thing that's very, what um, that emerged the evolutionary process in biological systems that are operating under 
constrained resources, this thing that feels that it feels like something to experience the world, which we think of as consciousness, is that really difficult to replicate is in, in artificial systems? Is that the thing that makes us fundamentally human? Or is it just a side effect uh, that we attribute way too much importance to? Uh, do, you, do, you have, do you have a sense? If you look out into the future and AI systems are the ones that are traveling out there uh, to Alpha Centauri and beyond, do you think they have to carry the the flame of consciousness with them? No, not necessarily. Um, they they may do, but they may it may not be a necessarily. I mean, there's, I guess we're talking about the difference here between sort of an AGI, artificial general intelligence, or consciousness, which are distinct ideas, and you can certainly have one without the other. So I could imagine. I, I would I would disagree with this certainly in that statement. Okay. Okay, I I, th I think it's very possible. To, in order to have intelligence, you have to have consciousness. Okay, well, I mean, to a, to a certain degree, Chat GPT three has a level of intelligence already. It's not a general intelligence, but it it displays properties of intelligence with with no consciousness. So um, again, I would disagree. Okay, okay. Well, <laughs> I I don't I don't I don't know I, because I, you said it's very nice. You said it displays properties of intelligence. Mm -hmm. In the same way it displays properties of intelligence, I would say it's starting to display properties of consciousness. It certainly could fool you that it's conscious. Correct, yeah, so there's, I guess like a, a Turing test problem, like if it's displaying all those properties, if it, if it quacks like a parrot, looks like a parrot, or yeah. quacks like a duck, things like, uh, isn't, it, isn't it basically a duck yeah. at that point? So yeah, I, could, I can see that argument. Um, it probably, it, I mean, certainly as an, I try to think about it from the observer's point of view as an astronomer, what am I looking for? Whether that intelligence is conscious or not has little bearing, I think, as to what I should be looking for when I'm trying to detect evidence of them. It would maybe affect their behavior in ways that I can't predict, um, but that's again getting into the game of what I would call xenopsychology of trying to make projections about the motivations of an alien species is incredibly difficult. And similarly, for any kind of artificial intelligence, it's unfathomable what its intentions may be. I mean, I would sort of question whether it would even be interested in traveling between the stars at all. If its primary goal is computation, computation for the sake of computation, then it's probably going to have a different way of you know it's going to be engineering its solar system and the nearby material around it for for a different goal if it's just simply trying to increase computer substrate across the universe and that of course if that is its principal intention to just essentially convert dumb matter into smart matter as it goes then i think that would come into conflict with our observations of the universe right because the the earth shouldn't be here if that were true the Earth should have been transformed into computer substrate by this point. There has been plenty of time yeah. in the history of the galaxy for that to have happened. Um, so I'm skeptical that we can. Uh, I'm skeptical in the part that that that's a behavior that AI or or any civilization really engages in. But I also find it difficult to find a way out of it. I, I've to, to explain why that would never happen in the entire history of the galaxy amongst potentially, if life is common, mm -hmm. millions, maybe even billions of instant instantiations of AI could have occurred across the galaxy. Um, and so that seems to be a knock against the idea that there is life else or, or intelligent life elsewhere in the, in the galaxy. The fact that that hasn't occurred in our history is maybe the only solid data point we really have about the activities of other civilizations. Of course, the scary one could be that um, we just, at this stage, intelligent alien civilizations just start destroying themselves. It, just, it becomes too powerful. Everything's just too many weapons, too many nuclear weapons, mm -hmm. too many nuclear weapon style systems that just from mistake to aggression to like the probability of self-destruction is too high relative to the challenge of of avoiding the technological challenges of avoiding self-destruction. You mean the 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 AI destroys itself, or, no, the, or we destroy ourselves prior to the advent of AI? 
as we get smarter and smarter AI, um, either AI destroys us or other, there could be just a million, like AI is correlated, the development of AI is correlated with all this other te technological mm -hmm. innovation, mm -hmm. uh, genetic genetic engineering, like all kinds of engineering at the nanoscale, mass manufacture of things that could destroy us or cracking physics enough to have very powerful weapons, nuclear weapons, all of it, just too much, Physics enables way too many things that can destroy us before it enables the um, the propulsion systems that allow us to fly far enough away before we destroy ourselves. Hmm. So maybe that's what happens to the other alien civilizations. Is that your resolution? Because I mean, I think us in the techno signature community and in the astronomy community aren't thinking about this problem seriously enough, in my opinion. We should we should be thinking about the what AI is 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 doing to our society and the implications of what we're looking for. And so the only, I think, part of this thinking has to involve people like yourself who are more intimate with the machine learning and artificial intelligence world is your, how do you reconcile in your mind, you said earlier that you think you can't imagine a galaxy where life and intelligence is not all over the place. And if artificial intelligence is a natural progression for civilizations, how do you reconcile that with, with the absence of any information around us, so any clues or hints of artificial behavior, artificially engineered stars, or colonization, computer substrate, transformed planets, anything like that? It's, it's uh, extremely difficult for me. It's ex the, the Fermi paradox broadly defined is extremely difficult for me. And the, the terrifying thing is one thing I suspect is that we keep destroying ourselves. The probability of self-destruction with, with advanced technology is just extremely high. That's why we're not seeing it. Mm -hmm. But then again, my intuition about, about why we haven't blown ourselves up with nuclear weapons, it, it's very surprising to me from a scientific perspective. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't, given all the cruelty I've seen in the world, um, given the, the, the the power that nuclear weapons place in the hands of a very small number of individuals. It's very surprising to me we had to destroy our, ourselves. And it seems to be a very low probability situation we have happening here. Um, but, and then the other explanation is the, is the zoo, is the observation mm. that we're just being observed. That's the, that's the only other thing. It's just, it's so difficult for me. Um, I, of course, all of science, everything is very humbling. It would be very humbling for me to learn that we're alone in the universe. It would change, uh, you know what? It, maybe I do want that to be true because you want our, us to be special. That's why I'm resisting that thought mm -hmm. maybe. There's no way we're that special. There's no way we're that special. That's, that's, that's where my resistance comes from. I, I would just say, you know, the specialness is something, we, we, in, implicitly in that statement, there's kind of an assumption that we are something positive. <laughs> like we're a gift to this planet or something, yeah. and that makes it special. But you know, it may be that intelligence is more of an, is like, we're like rats or cockroaches. We're an infestation of this planet. We're not, we're not some benevolent property that the planet would, a planet would ideally like to, to sure. have, if you can even say such a thing. But we, we may be, not only a, a generally a negative force for a planet's biosphere and its own survivability, which I think you can make a strong argument about, but we may also be a very persistent infestation that may even in, you know, interesting thoughts on this, in the wake of a nuclear war, would that be an absolute eradication of every human being, which would be a fairly extreme event? Or would the candle of consciousness, as you might call it, the flame of consciousness, continue with some small pockets that would maybe in 10,000 years, 100,000 years, we'd see civilization reemerge and play out the same thing over again. Yeah, uh, that's certainly, but nuclear weapons aren't powerful enough yet. But yes, the uh, but to sort of push back on the infestation, sure, but the word special doesn't have to be positive. I just mean- I think uh, it, it tends to imply, but I, I take your point, yeah, but maybe, um, just maybe Unique. extremely rare might be yeah, yeah. and I, that to me it just it, it's it's very strange for me to be cosmically unique it's just very strange i i i mean that we're <laughs> the only thing of this level of complexity in the galaxy 
just seems very strange to me. I, I, I would just, yeah, I, as I said, I do think it depends on this classification. I think we, there is sort of, an, again, it's kind of buried within there as a subtext, but there is a, a classification that we're doing here that what we are is a distinct category of, of life, let's say in this case, when we're talking about intelligence, we are something that can be separated. Um, but of course we see intelligence across the animal kingdom in you know dolphins, humpback whales, um, octopuses, crows, ravens. And so it's quite possible that um, that these are all manifestations of the same thing and, and we are not uh, we are not a particularly distinct class except for the fact we make technology. that's really the only difference to our intelligence. And we we classify that separately. But from a biological perspective, to some degree, it's really just all part of a continuum. And so that's why I, I, when we talk about unique, you are, you're, you are pay, putting yourself in a box which is distinct and saying, this is the only example of things that fall into this box. But the, but the walls of that box may themselves be a construct of our own arrogance that we are something distinct. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, but I was also speaking broadly for us, meaning all life on earth, that, but then it's possible that there's all kinds of living uh, ecosystems in, on other planets and other moons that just don't have interest in technological development. Mm -hmm. And may, maybe, maybe technological development is the 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 parasitic thing that destroys mm -hmm. the organism broadly. And then th maybe that's actually one of the fundamental realities whatever broad way to categorize technological development that's that's just a parasitic thing that just destroys itself 